Hi everyone, so I, I wanted to jump on and uh, share my thoughts. As I'm sure you've all seen by now, Derek Chauvin, the uh, Minneapolis cop who was accused of killing George Floyd last year, has been found guilty of uh, all charges. So that's second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. So this is understandably an emotional event in the news cycle, and the left is either openly celebrating the decision or doing their classic thing of saying that justice hasn't really been achieved until their every political dream has been achieved. Uh, I wanted to jump on and explain why I think this decision is completely wrong and why it's setting a dangerous precedent for our basic understanding of what justice even means. So again, Derek Chauvin was found guilty of all charges. Um, to understand whether this was a good or bad decision, it's first important to understand what each of these charges actually involve. So to find Chauvin guilty of secondary murder, the prosecution apparently demonstrated that one, Chauvin caused the death of Floyd intentionally but without premeditation, or two, Chauvin caused the death of Floyd without intending to kill him while committing or attempting to commit a felony offense, or three, Chauvin caused the death of Floyd without intending to kill him while intentionally inflicting or attempting to inflict bodily harm upon the victim, while Floyd was restrained under an order for protection and the victim is a person designated to receive protection under the order. So my biggest issue with the second degree murder conviction is that it either assumes intent for which there is really little evidence given the events which led up to Floyd on the ground and his complaints of breathing difficulties prior to being held on the ground, or that Chauvin was intentionally inflicting harm despite the fact that the form of hold used was part of his department's training methods. So to find Chauvin guilty of third degree murder, the prosecution apparently demonstrated that Chauvin's action or actions were eminently dangerous to others and evincing a depraved mind and displayed a disregard for human life. So again, while this is slightly more understandable compared to the frankly outrageous guilty charge of secondary murder, this also ignores that Chauvin's behavior was part of department training materials. Finally, to find Chauvin guilty of second degree manslaughter, the prosecution apparently demonstrated that George Floyd's death was the result of Chauvin's culpable negligence and that Chauvin created an unreasonable risk and consciously took chances of causing death or great bodily harm. So again, Chauvin's actions were part of department training guidelines and the context of the arrest, including erratic behavior, clear drug use, resisting arrest, and asking to be placed on the floor, make it difficult to conclude that Chauvin's actions created unreasonable risk. The crucial detail here though, is the legal standard required to validate a criminal conviction, which is beyond a reasonable doubt. So in simple terms, the jury have to believe that Chauvin murdered Floyd, that Chauvin was the primary factor in causing Floyd's death, beyond a reasonable doubt. To reach the conclusion that beyond a reasonable doubt, you have to argue that it is unreasonable to argue that Floyd's medical conditions, including heart problems, are irrelevant, that his long-term drug use, including during the event, is irrelevant, that his complaints of breathing difficulties were irrelevant, that the, pro uh, that the prosecution didn't want to call Floyd's alleged drug dealer to the stand because of concerns that his drug dealer could face third degree murder charges for supplying Floyd with the drugs that resulted in his death is also irrelevant. That Floyd complained of breathing difficulties while in the car is irrelevant. The brutal fact is that these factors are not irrelevant. It's one thing to argue that the video is visually appalling. I would agree, it's an awful video and to watch someone suffer like that is truly a terrible thing. It's also one thing to argue that Chauvin didn't behave properly or even that his behavior was reprehensible. However, that is not what we are arguing. We are arguing whether or not, beyond a reasonable doubt, Chauvin is primarily responsible for George Floyd's death. And given the wide array of additional factors, that conclusion is objectively impossible to reach. The fact is that this case was, by design, not really about Chauvin. It was never really about Chauvin. That's why multiple Democrats were saying that America is on trial. The goal here was to use Chauvin, guilty or not, as the image of all that is apparently wrong with America. And to do anything other than finding him guilty would be to admit that there is nothing wrong with America. So part of me understands why the jury reached this decision, even if I and many others who wholeheartedly disagree with this a verdict overall will complain. Imagine being a member of that jury. Imagine hearing Maxine Waters flying in from California to join the protesters and threatening violence if they didn't reach the conclusion she wanted. Imagine being a member of the jury as mainstream media outlets dox you, publishing the neighborhoods you live in, placing you in considerable danger. 
Imagine living in a city poised on the edge of violence and daring to reach the so-called wrong answer. This isn't to say that they are necessarily wrong. I'm not, as the left will claim, just a white guy who's angry because a white officer was found guilty of murdering a black man. Instead, I'm someone who is looking at the facts as dispassionately as possible and seeing a vast void between the available evidence and the definition of the charges leveled against Chauvin. When I heard that they had reached a unanimous decision after just a few hours of deliberation, it was clear that this was the foregone conclusion the left claimed from the very beginning. America, in the eyes of the left, took one step towards the ever-retreating utopian image of racial equity. However, law and order and our judicial system is not about achieving any such vision, and it shouldn't be. It's about determining the specific guilt of a specific person of a specific crime or crimes. That's it. This trial should have been about determining whether Derek Chauvin, beyond a reasonable doubt, murdered George Floyd or committed second-degree manslaughter. The truth is that reasonable doubt exists, that's a fact. Chauvin should and will obviously appeal this decision and given the behavior of Democrats like Maxine Waters, Joe Biden who prayed for the right result and the Minneapolis mayor, his legal team will have a decent case that these behaviors impacted their decision. But what worries me most is that a line has regardless been crossed. The left have demonstrated a new level of power, that they can wield the mob and the threat of violence to sidestep the very definition of crimes like second and third degree murder to achieve the result they want. I'm not even defending Derek Chauvin. I just care about truth and objectivity and dispassionate justice. If you agree that this form of justice matters, then you should care about the impact threats of violence have on these decisions. You should care about the power of the media over the jury, and you should care about the definition of crimes and whether beyond a reasonable doubt, a pivotal and crucial element of our justice system is protected or rejected. If this case is anything to go by, beyond a reasonable doubt, has been replaced with mob rule. And that's not a justice system any one of us should be celebrating.